Suppose you want to approximate some function, but you're only given its value at a finite set of points we call nodes. Lagrange interpolation is able to produce a polynomial which goes through all the points. It does this by first creating a set of polynomials, each associated with a particular node, and they're made in such a way that the first polynomial, L0, is equal to 1 at the first node and 0 at all the others. The second polynomial, L sub 1, is equal to 1 at the second node and 0 at all the others. And this pattern continues for all these so-called Lagrange polynomials, because each Lagrange polynomial only contributes to its own node. We can then just multiply each one by the y value it should have and then add them all together. The resulting polynomial then goes through or interpolates all of the data points. So how do we find these Lagrange polynomials, the L sub i's? We want to construct a function L sub i of x, which is 1 at x equals x sub i and 0 at all the other nodes x sub j, where j is not equal to i. The easy bit is finding a polynomial equal to 0 at the points we want it to be. Consider the polynomial y of x equals x minus a times x minus b times x minus c. We know this is 0 when x is a, b or c, so let's use this idea to make our polynomial 0 at the nodes. So let's say we have the nodes at x is equal to 0, 1, 2, and 3. We want L sub 1 to be 1 at the second node, 1. Sorry, that's confusing, but L sub 0 would relate to the first node, 0. Anyway, L sub 1 should be 0 at x equals 0, 2, and 3. So we'll guess our Lagrange polynomial will be something like L sub 1 star of x is equal to x minus 0 times x minus 2 times x minus 3. This absolutely does equal 0 at the right places, but we're not getting the right number at x is equal to 1. Remember, at x equals 1, L sub 1 star of x should equal to 1. So what does it equal? Well, if we plug in x equals 1, we get L sub 1 star equals 1 minus 0 times 1 minus 2 times 1 minus 3, which is 2. But actually, the bit underlined turns out to be the nicer form. Look, let our new guess be L sub 1 of x equals x minus 0 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 divided by 1 minus 0 times 1 minus 2 times 1 minus 3. And we've got it. I've removed the asterisk because this is in fact the correct formula. We have the polynomial on the numerator, which makes L sub 1 0 at all the other nodes, 0, 2, and 3. And we divide by that same polynomial evaluated at the node we want it to be equal to 1. So in general, for a set of nodes, x sub i for i equals 0 to n, the ith Lagrange polynomial is the product from j equals 0 to n, excluding j is equal to i, of x minus x sub j over x sub i minus x sub j. Notice too that this is a polynomial of order n since there are n lots of x minus something multiplied together. I'll use this fact later on. And so for the nodes 0, 1, 2 and 3, these are the Lagrange polynomials. Given interpolation points x sub i and y sub i from i equals 0 to n, the Lagrange interpolation formula tells us to calculate the Lagrange polynomials L sub i, multiply each L sub i by y sub i, and then add them together as captured in this summation formula. The resulting polynomial P of x interpolates or goes through the points. This is straightforward to prove. Substituting x sub i into the formula, we have p of x sub i equals y sub 0 times l sub 0 plus y sub 1 times l sub 1. Eventually, we'll reach y sub i times l sub i. And finally, we have plus y sub n, l sub n. Now, apart from l sub i, all the Lagrange polynomials, l sub 0, l sub 1, etc., are all equal to 0 at x sub i and L sub i is equal to 1, as we engineered it to be. 
So we end up with y sub i times 1 or just y sub i. And this is exactly the condition we wanted to prove. P of x sub i is equal to y sub i for any i. What is the polynomial produced by the Lagrange interpolation formula? I just want to finish off with a discussion about the nature of the polynomial we're left with. Suppose L of x is the Lagrange interpolant for n plus 1 nodes. We know already that this is of order p sub n. Now, suppose there's another polynomial, p of x, which is in p sub m, where m is less than n. So it's a lower order polynomial, but it just happens to also interpolate the same set of nodes. This changes everything. Let me explain. First, I want to make use of this key fact that a polynomial of order pn has at most n zeros, or is identically zero. So for example, a quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c has at most two zeros, unless of course a, b and c are all just equal to zero. Now, let's subtract p from l. Since they're equal at the nodes, we now have a polynomial that's of order n but has n plus 1 zeros. Using our key fact, this must mean that l of x minus p of x is equal to zero, or l of x was equal to p of x all along. What does this mean? It means that the Lagrange interpolation formula finds the lowest order polynomial, l of x, which interpolates nodes x sub i. We've proved this already. Assume there's some p of x which is a lower order polynomial that interpolates the same nodes. L minus p is in pn, but it has n plus 1 zeros, as we've seen. And the only way this is possible is that if L was equal to p in the first place. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.